people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. The 21st ASEAN India Summit marked a significant milestone in India's Act East policy, celebrating a decade of strength and ties with ASEAN nations. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's commitment to enhancing this partnership was evident through new initiatives including a 10-point plan focused on connectivity and resilience. With an emphasis on collaboration in fields like science and technology, the summit reinforced the vital role of India-ASEAN relations in shaping the future of the region. This partnership is poised to navigate challenges and seize opportunities in the emerging Asian century. Take a look. India's Act East policy focuses on strengthening ties with the Asia-Pacific region. Initially an economic initiative, the policy has expanded to include political, strategic and cultural dimensions, fostering institutional mechanisms for dialogue and cooperation. India has established strategic partnerships with several countries, including Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Australia, Singapore and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN. Recently, the 21st ASEAN India Summit took place in Vientiane, Laos on October 10, 2024, marking a decade of the Act East policy. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi attended this summit for the 11th time, collaborating with ASEAN leaders to review the ASEAN India Comprehensive Strategic Partnership and discuss future directions for cooperation. In his address, PM Modi emphasized India's commitment to ASEAN unity, centrality and the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. He also referred to the 21st century as the Asian century, underlining the importance of India-ASEAN relations in shaping Asia's future. I have made policy of India's इस नीति ने भारत और आसियान देशों के ऐतिहासिक संबंधों को नई ऊर्जा, दिशा और गति दी है। आसियान सेंट्रलिटी को प्रमुखता देते हुए 2019 में हमने इंडो पैसिफिक ओशन इनिशिएटिव लॉन्च किया था। ये आसियान आउटलुक और इंडो पैसिफिक को कंप्लीमेंट करता है। मेरा मानना है कि 21वीं सदी एशियन सेंचुरी भारत और आसियान देशों की सेंचुरी है आज जब विश्व के कई हिस्सों में संघर्ष और तनाव की स्थिति है तब भारत और आसियान की मित्रता समन्वय संवाद और सहयोग to commemorate a decade of the Act East policy, Prime Minister Modi introduced several initiatives aimed at fostering people-to-people -people connections, including a youth summit and a start-up festival. Additionally, during the 21st ASEAN India Summit, he unveiled a comprehensive 10-point plan designed to strengthen the ASEAN India Comprehensive Partnership with a particular emphasis on enhancing connectivity and resilience. The key elements of this plan include the ASEAN India Women Scientists Conclave, supported by the ASEAN India Science and Technology Development Fund. The plan also seeks collaboration in digital and cyber resilience through a regular ASEAN India Cyber Policy Dialogue, alongside workshops focused on green hydrogen. I think it is uh, an appropriate uh, uh, proposal because uh, 
Indo, India and ASEAN, our relations have improved a lot during the last 10 years or so, but there is scope for more improvement. Our trade is now about 130 billion uh, two-way, but it can improve even more. And uh, one of the proposals is for the women scientists to get together. That's good. And also it speaks of cyberspace. The 21st ASEAN India Summit reviewed the achievements and charted future goals for the ASEAN India Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. The event served as an opportunity to strengthen ties in various sectors, positioning the partnership as a cornerstone of the region's future growth. Ultimately, the 21st ASEAN India Summit symbolizes a new chapter in the ACTIS policy where strength and ties and collaborative initiatives pave the way for a prosperous and resilient future for both India and ASEAN nations. The 23rd meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Council of Heads of Government in Islamabad showcased India's commitment to regional collaboration. External Affairs Minister S. A. Shankar's participation highlighted India's proactive role, signing eight key documents and emphasizing themes like One Earth, One Family, One Future. His dialogue also promoted India's global initiatives such as the International Solar Alliance and the Global Biofuel Alliance, which align with SEO priorities on sustainability and wellness. India's attendance at the summit amid regional tensions signals a strategic approach to enhance relationships with member states and address shared security concerns effectively. Take a look. The 23rd meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Council of Heads of Government concluded in Islamabad with the signing of key documents marking the conclusion of productive and constructive deliberations. India's participation in the SEO meeting highlighted its commitment to fostering regional collaboration and innovation. As a key player in the discussions, India's External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar signed eight significant outcome documents that reflect the country's proactive engagement and contributions to the summit's agenda. During the meeting, J. Shankar developed a dialogue centered on the theme of One Earth one family, one future, as well as stated the outcomes of India's initiatives like the SEO Startup Forum, the Special Working Group on Startups and Innovation and Traditional Medicine, which received support from member states. Jay Shankar highlighted that India's global initiatives, including the International Solar Alliance and the Global Biofuel Alliance, align with SEO priorities and contribute to sustainability, climate resilience, wellness and biodiversity. India's decision to attend the SEO summit in Pakistan, particularly when tensions between the two countries have been high, has been viewed as a strategic and pragmatic move for several reasons. This participation underscored India's commitment to regional stability as it allowed for discussions on shared concerns. Additionally, India's presence at the summit bolstered its relationships with other member countries, including Russia and China, enhancing its regional influence. As made it very, very clear by Jay Shankar, so the whole uh, of India stands with him. And there are two points. The first point is, Pakistan should shun terrorism. It should not send terrorists across the borders and the second very strong message is the matter to be solved between India and Pakistan is the Pak occupied Kashmir, the illegally occupied Kashmir part which has been uh, uh, illegally occupied by Pakistan. So that has to be solved and solved in the sense uh, Pakistan has to um, vacate that part and um, hand it over to India. These are the two issues and Mr. Jaishankar has made it very, very clear that these two issues are the only ones that we need to solve amongst uh, these two countries. By addressing security issues within the SEO framework, 
India could effectively communicate its perspectives on critical matters. By maintaining the past practice and sending the external affairs minister to lead the Indian delegation, New Delhi has sent out a strong message that India takes its association with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization seriously. SCO is a useful, important mechanism. हम पाकिस्तान के चलते अपना रोल क्यों SCO से, you know, reduce करें? So we have to play a role, we are playing a role, जो भी हमें दिखता है with the SCO, Pakistan उसमें है या नहीं है, हमें उस चीज को sideline करके देखना है, क्योंकि जो हमारे interests हैं, in the SCO context, in the larger regional context, multiple जो issues हैं, they are very large interests. जहां तक बात रही पाकिस्तान की और हमारे रिश्तों की, वो तो एक अलग, you know, हम कह सकते हैं, एक अलग trajectory पर हैं, बहुत clear cut है, कि उसमें जब तक पाकिस्तान अपनी यू नो प्रोपोगेंडा और अपनी ग्राउंड की टेरर सपोर्ट नहीं कम करता तब तक हमारी रूटीन रिलेशन नहीं हो सकते दी शंघाई कोऑपरेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वाज एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन 2001 टू फॉस्टर रीजनल सिक्योरिटी इकोनॉमिक कोलैबोरेशन एंड कल्चरल एक्सचेंज अमंग इट्स मेंबर स्टेट्स इनिशियली इट्स फोकस वाज ऑन एड्रेसिंग इश्यूज सच एज टेररिज्म separatism and extremism, particularly in Central Asia. India joined the SEO as a full member in June 2017, motivated by its desire to strengthen regional security cooperation, particularly concerning terrorism and stability in Afghanistan. The SEO serves as a platform for India to engage in trade and economic partnerships with Central Asian nations. Time now for Asia this week, the stories from across the continent. Bangladesh International Crimes Tribunal issued an arrest warrant for former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, citing her alleged involvement in mass killings during violent protests that erupted earlier this year. The protests which began as a student-led movement against public sector job quotas escalated into some of the deadliest unrest since the country's independence in 1971, resulting in over 700 deaths and numerous injuries. The violence ultimately forced Hasina to flee to India on August 5, and an interim government led by Nobel Peace Prize laureate Mohammad Yunus took charge. North Korea's state media said that country has designated South Korea a hostile state. It confirmed that the North's National Assembly has amended the country's constitution to align with leader Kim Jong-un's vow to abandon unification with the South as a national goal. And earlier this week, North Korea's military destroyed sections of the road and rail links at the border, calling it a legitimate action against a hostile state as defined by the new constitution. The United States, South Korea and Japan announced the launch of a new multinational team to monitor the enforcement of sanctions against North Korea after Russia and China thwarted monitoring activities at the United Nations. The mechanism, named the Multilateral Sanctions Monitoring Team, has been introduced after Russia in March rejected the annual renewal of a UN panel of experts that had over the past 15 years overseen the implementation of sanctions aimed at curbing North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. In Gujarat, women are breaking barriers and driving social and economic upliftment from community radio jockeys to thriving self-help groups supported by government initiatives, the transformation is inspiring. Schemes such as Mukhya Mantri Mahila Utkarsh Yojana provide crucial financial support and training empowering women to start their own businesses. As Gujarat celebrates 23 years of PM Modi's leadership, these stories reflect a commitment to creating an inclusive future showcasing the incredible potential of women as catalysts for change in their communities. Take a look. Riding her bike to her workplace, Dr. Neelam Tarvi, a radio jockey, 
embodies the spirit of progress and empowerment of women in Gujarat. Kem Cho Iktanagar, Subshava. As a member of the local tribal community, Neelam's broadcasts on Radio Unity showcase the rich cultural traditions and history of Narmada district which houses the grand statue of Unity. She, along with her fellow RJs, enthralls listeners with the stories of social change and women empowerment. Neelam says it was Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of establishing a community radio station in this region which bore fruition on the Independence Day of 2021. Mananiya Pradhan Mantri Shri Narendra Modi ji ka ek swapna tha ki yaha pe ek radio center bane, community radio center bane aur usme jo bhi RJ ke taur pe kaam karte hain wo local aur tribal log ho. Yaha pe hum log show mein bhi women empowerment ki baatein karte hain. The success stories of self-help groups in Gujarat further exemplify the larger trend of women playing a vital role in the state's economic and social progress. And the government's support has been a significant factor in the growth of such initiatives. Schemes like the Mukhya Mantri Mahila Utkarsh Yojana and the Mission Mangalam have offered financial backing, market linkages and training to self-help groups across Gujarat. Around 24 lakh women are currently active under 2 lakh Sakhi Mandals or self-help groups that are being managed to the tune of Rs 1,000 crores through bank linkage. When Narendra Modi ji came, then we had a lot of progress. Our salary has also increased and we have done a lot of good for our salary. Narendra Bhai has made a lot of money. वो भी बहुत अच्छा काम किया हमारे लिए वो विधवा पेंशन की योजना है वो भी बहुत अच्छी है। The government facilitates these women by providing subsidies, easy access to loans ranging from rupees ten thousand to rupees one lakh, as well as free stalls to reach a wider audience. From offering training to providing financial assistance for setting up businesses. The government has taken several steps to empower women entrepreneurs. Many women who previously worked as employees are now running their own businesses thanks to the financial assistance provided under both state and central government schemes such as the Prime Minister Street Vendors Atma Nirbhar Nidhi Scheme and the Deen Dayal Anteodaya Yojana. सरकार को ऐसे हमको ये पूरा स्टॉल फ्री में मिलता है जैसे कि राखी का स्टॉल है नवरात्रि का स्टॉल है एयरपोर्ट स्टॉल है ये सब स्टॉल हमको फ्री में मिलता है और हम पूरे साल ये घर पे हैंडवर्क करते हैं इसके बाद हम ये सब 10-12 बहन का ग्रुप है सब हैंडवर्क करके ये स्टॉल में सब मिलके हम बेचते हैं इसके बाद स्टॉल में हमको सबसे अच्छा रिस्पॉन्स मिलता है हमारा पूरा घर का ये खर्च भी हम निकाल सकते हैं इसमें से As Gujarat celebrates Vikas Sapta commemorating 23 years of PM Modi's leadership, these stories stand as testaments to the state's commitment to fostering a more inclusive and prosperous future for all. The dedication and support from the government through initiatives like community radio stations and self-help groups are creating a fertile ground for women's empowerment. Let's now take you to Ladakh, often called the crown jewel of India for its stunning landscapes of mountains, open skies, winding rivers and lush valleys. Its rich culture, traditions and values enhance its natural beauty. The capital Leh is not only breathtaking but also a key centre of Buddhism in India, where the region's natural splendour and Buddhist philosophy have coexisted harmoniously for centuries. Leh portrayed at nearly 11,000 feet is a vibrant blend of cultures where religious harmony thrives. Though diverse, it remains a stronghold of Buddhism with Mahayana and Vajrayana traditions and the four sects Nyagma, Kagyu, Sakya and Gelug deeply rooted. 
Chanting fills the air during prayers and rituals, keeping the ancient Buddhist spirit alive in Ladakh for millennia. Buddha Dharam, first of all, was in Ashoka. زمانے میں اس کا جو استوپا تھا ایک استوپا یہاں ہے یہاں کیا کہتے ہیں تیری میں ایک استوپا زانسکار میں ہے تو تب سے جو گندار آرٹ والے آئے کشمیر سے آئے تو انہوں نے بدھا کا اسٹیچو بنانا شروع کیا پہاڑوں پہ پتھر پہ اور تب ہمارے یہاں سے لوسا اور انچین زانپو جی آئے انہوں نے نیارما کا جو گونپا ہے وہ بیوٹ کیا یہ ان دسمی دسویں صدی کے بیچ میں ہے لوسا اور انچین زانپو آ گیا تب سے جب جب سے لوسا اور انچین زانپو آئے تب سے بدھیزم کا یہاں پھیلنا شروع ہو گیا لداخ تبیتین انفلوئنس بدھزم ود لے ایٹ اٹس کلچرل ہارٹ اٹریکٹس وزٹرس سیکنگ اسپرچل ڈیپتھ ہیئر بدھا ریورڈ ایز اے ڈیٹی ہو اٹین نروانا اینڈ ویریس بودھی ستواز وو وینریٹڈ ان اینشن مونیسٹریز Ladakh's rich heritage draws tourists eager to explore and gain insights from its profound Buddhist traditions. Actually, we come to Ladakh uh, uh, to visit the uh, holy places of Buddhism tradition and uh, to learn about uh, your place and also to pray for the peace. Actually, all these ladies from Russia, from different cities of Russia, come here and we pray for the peace uh, on uh, uh, mountain, on, on the lake, in every place, uh, because, and here we also, because uh, we uh, share the same, uh, actually we are motivated by the peace in all the world. Now you know that in Russia and Ukraine there is a war, but uh, a lot of people in Russia, they pray for the peace. On the outskirts of Leh, a family's deep Buddhist faith has endured for generations. Despite harsh winters, with temperatures dipping into minus 20, their daily prayers and rituals continue. The elderly women, vibrant in their 70s, remain lively, embracing their faith, culture, traditional dance and song with unwavering passion. In Ladakh, Buddhism is woven into education. At Mahabodhi Residential School, from nursery to plus two, each day begins with prayers to Buddha, blending academic learning with Dharma teachings to nurture compassionate, responsible citizens. Dhamma is very important because Dhamma includes all the ethical values, all the principles of Lord Buddha, and without it, a modern education is meaningless. So, therefore, I think that Dhamma is very much important in everyday, in everyday lives of everyone. In regional classes, children learn about the equality of all faiths with Dhamma education aimed at fostering respect for others. Each class begins with meditation, yoga and mindfulness practices. Students explore Buddha's life, his struggles, the pursuit of truth and the core teachings of Buddhism. For those interested in pursuing religious studies as a career, numerous opportunities are available. Buddhism is a way of life. It's teach about like uh, students how to grow morally and you know like with disciplines and all. So. With that, uh, we try to infuse, the, understand the teachings of the Buddha to the students. With that, we have uh, like uh, different sections. We have like includes with the yoga, meditations, which help to concentrate on the breathing in and out, which help to uh, concentration, which helps in studies as well. So it's uh, and also uh, in Buddhism, we have a Buddhist teachings. Not only that, we have teach on moralities and you know overall uh, growth of the students. Tibetan Buddhist mythology features spirits, deities and demons symbolizing good and evil depicted in temple art. Their stories come alive during annual festivals in Ladakh's compass, especially through vibrant mask dances. In Ladakh, every peak and valley tells a story of beauty and devotion. 
and with that we come to the end of this week's episode see you next week goodbye and take care people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect